Apple TV strikes again with sugar. Wow. I'm Dan. That's Backface. I'm loving this show. Absolutely oh, yeah. loving this show. What about you? Uh, dude, it's it's so good. Right up my alley. It's like a show made by cinema lovers, which is just, yes. yeah, it's, I, we'll, we'll get into all the things I love for sure, but there are so many, so many. There's like, even just the camera choices they pick, like early on the transition from black and white to color. Yeah. That was, that was really cool. His car driving around LA in that car. Yeah. It just, it's so cool. It's like a, it's like a throwback to classic noir and yeah. I'm hesitant to use the masterpiece word like now but i'm close to using it it's oh it's so good the editing in this show is almost magic like i i watched a couple parts back and forth a few times just to be like how did you do this yeah because it's crazy yeah the when they're when they're cutting back and forth between like old school like 1960s yes. film like with driving, they do that a lot with him driving around. They'll like cut to old movies and then cut Love back it. to him. They reframe a lot, which I also really like. They'll they'll cut to like four three, which is when it's like boxy, and then they'll go back to sixteen by nine where it's nice and wide. Yeah, there's just so much character to this show and the production of it. The sets, man, the the oh my god, they yeah, look Ka- so beautiful. Colin Farrell perfectly cast for this role. He's yeah. doing a great job. And like you said, when they cut to like an old movie. Yeah, I, 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 I suppose I get that from the movies. I love the movies. And he said himself, he's not a film buff, he's like a film addict. You're a film buff. Buff. Buff is, uh, it's putting it lightly, it's, it's more like an addiction. Uh. He's that type of person, and he even goes to the movies to watch an old movie at one point in episode two. So we'll talk about it, but... I'm very impressed. We're going to be covering this show weekly starting next Friday. You know, they did the two episode drop. So we're going to talk briefly about episode one. We're going to break down episode two entirely. Basically, this is what's happening, right? He solves this case in Japan and immediately jumps on another case where his handler didn't want him to, wanted him to take a break, but he couldn't say no because it's this Hollywood producer, Jonathan Siegel, reached out to him. So he's like, Okay, this tickles my fancy. I want to see what's up about it. Now, Jonathan's granddaughter, Olivia, has been missing for two weeks. She has a history of addiction. So there's something to play with that where some family members think she's just on a on the bender. She'll come back and she'll be fine. But clearly they're hiding stuff. We'll get into it with the episode two breakdown. But what's up with the moment that Sugar had in the shower? Is that all to do with the injury he sustained with the knife? You'll never be safe in Japan. (laughs) It has something to do with his uh, illness, I think. Okay. Some sort of neurological illness, I'm assuming. And me with all my, um, I don't know issues and by the way his hand goes and he's kind of it was almost like he was sensitive to light and hallucinating a little bit and he does yeah. the injections into his neck which is pretty right. hardcore because i don't really know any medications you'd have to do that with yeah right. that, that weird uh box that he has where like he keeps yeah. the medication yeah. it's cool because it kind of i don't know where it's all going but there's a theme of addiction throughout the first two episodes or mm-hmm. like you have like olivia who was a addict and recovered and then uh her stepmom i can't remember her name oh like, melanie yeah melanie she goes to the aa meeting because she used to be an addict then she fell off and then you have carl the homeless guy who i love the interaction between them but it's also like really touching on addiction well yeah and then you have uh sugar himself who's a movie addict he says but i don't know if his condition is gonna have to do with some sort of addiction that he has uh if like the medication is him being addicted to something and it's affecting him or if it's like actual medication for it and he's just addicted to to movies or something but it's it's a cool theme to kind of weave through it's nicely weaved through it's kind of touching on like hollywood as a whole and addiction that runs through hollywood and how it affects the people in the area and, and all that which is yeah 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 and it seems like he's also slightly addicted to work because you know <laughs> yeah. Ru- ruby wanted him to take a break because she knows and she wants him to see this doctor that she keeps bringing up he wanted to jump right back into work and she wanted him to go on a, a long hiatus and she's like after this case you're done so she's really trying to look out for him she knows something's really wrong with him that needs to be addressed so basically that's what we got with the first episode we know he has some type of condition Olivia's been missing for two weeks, and there's a dead body in Olivia's trunk, which we find out the name of who this person is in episode two. So let's jump into episode two. It was called These People, These Places. Starts off with Bernie 
meeting up with Sugar. And, you know, starts off okay. And Sugar's kind of feeling him out, trying to see what he's all about. And Bernie's like, ah, oh, she'll come back any day now, ready to go to rehab. I gotta tell you, Sugar, I think you're wasting your time and my father's money. Olivia will come back any day now, just like she always does, ready to go to rehab again. And Sugar doesn't trust him right off the bat. So what'd you make from that little interaction there? I feel like it's a misdirection in a, in a certain sense. It feels like the whole family as a whole has a lot of things that they're keeping in a closet somewhere. But yeah. I think they're trying to make it feel like they know what happened to Olivia or had something to do with it. But I feel like it's going to be more along the lines of they don't want Sugar digging into their family because he'll find a bunch of things that they don't want him to find. Right. But it, he's feeling the, the tension relating to Olivia, but he keeps saying that the, he knows that they're lying, but he doesn't know what they're lying about or what they're trying to cover up. Yeah. So I feel like it's supposed to be a misdirection. <clears throat> well, and we'll talk about it later. There's something that Davey's involved with that they're trying to bury. So we'll, we'll get into that scene when it comes up. But then he goes on to talk about Melanie, who was Olivia's stepmom because she was married after Olivia's mom, Rachel Kay, died and right. she was murdered think so i believe she was yeah I'm a car crash was it a car oh yeah i think it was a car crash yeah but um, it could, could have been a, a murder and they covered up to be a car crash it kind of feels like that yeah yeah it's it seems like the type of show where there's more layers to dig into and you know the polaroid so he shows the polaroid the raunchy pictures of rachel k to bernie bernie's like i didn't take that photo and sugar says thank you for telling me the truth bernie i appreciate it mm-hmm because he kind of knew that, I guess. Yeah. Um, he seems to be very smart. He even says, I'm really good at my job. I'm not being modest. I'm really good at what I do. And a man like Jonathan Siegel wouldn't have called me otherwise. He seems to be always a step a step or two ahead. It was really interesting to see that interaction. Bernie gets upset. He dips. Sugar hit a nerve. He's hiding something. Or at least I hit a nerve. I mean, being told to fuck off is usually a sign of progress. So that's where we're at with them. And then we see what Bernie does later on to try to find more info about Sugar. Since he set up the security cameras, he noticed that while he was out breakfast with Bernie, Davey and the security guard <laughs> went went through the place. I was just laughing. That scene's really funny because he sets up the cameras and when he's talking and he's like, oh, at least they're kind of idiots and they're not really good yeah. at this. <laughs> yeah. It's good. It helps when they're stupid. It's good. So he disarms the recorder and apparently he had a fake note from not his mom that they think is his mom and they're going to contact this person. Yeah. So it was like something that he planned to head on, which is really smart. I don't know who this woman is, but he calls her and says, Someone's going to call you. They want to talk to my mom. Obviously, they think that's you. God bless paper trails. I don't know who she is as of now. They didn't really explain that yet. But again, he's always a couple steps ahead. So... He's like, I'm not getting anywhere with the family. They don't trust me, except Jonathan, the guy who hired him. No one else trusts them. So he's like, I'm going to go talk to Olivia's friends. And the consensus is that she was pretty out of control in her days of using. Why do you think she was getting sober? Was she using more than anyone else or drinking more? Yeah, I think she started to get a little out of control. Then she had a life-changing moment, as they call it. And I love the cut-ins, again, of classic movies. They were doing this throughout the whole process here. Are you sure? You should have seen her in her heyday. She did some shit that would have landed most kids in jail. Like what? A lot of drugs, dude. <laughs> they do it a lot. And then he shows the, her drug dealer the picture of the dead guy in the trunk. Hey, John Sugar. Hey, did you ever see her with this guy? Never saw him. You sure? Positive. More on him later, but that's what you get. Basically, they were all saying, yeah, she had her issues. She turned her life around. So do you think she was using at this point or... I don't. I I, no. I think. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I think she stayed clean. Me too. Yeah. And I think Melanie knows way more than what she's letting on at this point. Yeah, it feels like like Bernie and Davy are trying to keep Sugar away from certain aspects of their life, where Melanie feels like she is more closely tied to what happened to Olivia and, and knows a little bit more than she's letting on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And then we get the story of David Davey. If this story comes out, 
No studio is going to release this movie and you'll be out 60 million bucks. So they're trying to bury some type of thing that happened with eight females. Seven of the eight victims that they don't want to call victims have signed <laughs> NDAs, so what did he do? We have signed ironclad NDAs from seven of the eight victims. Don't use the word victim. Well, what worries me is accuser number eight. You know, he has this movie coming out that's supposed to revitalize his career. It was like the child in the corner, now the man in the corner. They're doing like a, re a sequel to a movie that was successful in the past. So they don't want this story to come out. And that seems like that is probably what they don't want Sugar to dig into to expose so that's probably why they're so into silencing sugar that's I feel I... like that that might be a part of it but i it also feels like kind of like what we were talking about before that the death of the mother is somehow wrapped in with this family and they had something to do with it yeah um, i can see that so with it, rachel it feels like a combo of not wanting to dig into Davy, but I feel like the the dad doesn't so much care about what Davy did and sugar finding out about it if like a lot of people know i'm assuming that he's probably thinking that sugar will find out eventually if he digs like the tiniest bit i'm with you there and it's clear that jonathan bernie and davy are not close you know they don't really he doesn't respect them he calls his movies shit let's him focus on making bad movies he calls bernie's <laughs> movies shit yeah he, he, he even insults davy calls him like an idiot or something like that and his idiot son I shouldn't have said that, should I? Yeah. So it's clear they're not close. And, but, you know, Jonathan's the one who set everyone else's careers into motion. So they kind of have to respect him for being the guy who put them all into a place of success. It's like, you know, Nepo. He's the reason they're famous. So they have to respect the, the grandfather, but he doesn't really respect them. And it's he a, wants to continue with this case. It's like an interesting commentary on Hollywood in, in a yeah. very subtle way. Where it was like there, there was an era of creators and and like a creative minds, I guess, that set up the whole era we're in now. And then all they can do is just rehash things and try to bury stories of how awful the industry is and all that. Just yeah. uh, it's like subtle, but it, it's there. There's a lot of recent media that's trying to comment on Hollywood, and they do it in such a heavy-handed way. It's refreshing to see a show where it's just kind of an undertone of of feeling and, and uh, like, aura around this, like, every person, every character. Yep. 100% agree. And, you know, then Jonathan's kind of like, all right, well, let's talk about Olivia. So then Sugar shows him the week that she disappeared. She made repeat visits to a location where Carmen Vasquez was R-word and killed, and her car was there the night she died. A woman who lived to this address, Carmen Vasquez, was raped and murdered recently. Olivia's car was there the night that Miss Vasquez was killed. And the body of the guy that was there is the guy that's in the trunk of Olivia's car. So it's like, okay, and his name is Clifford Carter. We find this out now. And this may have something to do with the death of the man who killed Miss Vasquez. Why would you think that? Because his body is in the trunk of Olivia's car right now. So it's like, what the hell? Did Olivia <laughs> kill this guy? Put him in the trunk? Did, like, how did, how did he end up in Olivia's trunk? That's bizarre. Yeah. I, I was kind of on the fence until the end of the episode on whether Olivia had done it. But now I feel like she probably did it. Yeah, yeah, um, I think so. Yeah, I feel like Melanie probably knows that that was the case. Yeah, And Carmen, right. I feel like her and Olivia were probably friends. So yeah. that's going to come into play and Melanie knows that they were friends and it's kind of, uh, there's pieces there. I could feel the pieces, but it, you know, there's not enough to put it all together. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Well, and we know we find out, well, we're about to get into it. So Melanie's night with sugar caused her to quit drinking and go back to AA. We find out she had 23 years sober, but had a two week binge. And her, then she woke up disgusted, dumped out her alcohol went to a meeting, invited Sugar to come. And then she's like, all right, you want to talk about Olivia? Let's go talk about Olivia. Let's go get something to eat first. So really quick, really quick. Yeah. The monologue that she does in the AA meeting, so good. And here we live in a world with millions of people, all with the capacity to love and be loved. And somehow we just can't get our shit together. And I think it's because we're afraid. Yeah. So well written, man. And I didn't realize that she could act that well. And it was... Oh, I, I don't know. It just blew me away. Very like, I love uh, introspective kind of monologues, like on mm -hmm. on hum, hum, human humans and society and all that. Just kind of 
really nailed home how well the writing for this show is and how it's good it's gonna be and maintain yeah. yeah yeah i like i like amy ryan a lot you know if you've never seen gone baby gone i highly suggest that she's great in that i don't think it, yeah I'll have to that check was it ben, out. ben affleck's directorial debut was gone baby gone oh okay yeah yeah so she's really good in that so i think she's she's got a lot of talent so you know they talk about olivia Melanie spews the same, like, basically the same sentence word for word that Bernie said. When you're talking about an addict, there's a reason for a shift in behavior. She's probably using again. She's probably going to walk in here any day now, hung over and strung out and ready to get back to rehab. It's like she was prepped, right? Sugar asks if she's ever seen Clifford. She says no. He knows she's lying, but doesn't know why. Melanie gets upset. She gets defensive, kicks him out. But he puts a tracker on her car, makes a phone call and says, Hey, Charlie. I think she knows where the girl is, and she'll take us there tomorrow and just get the van ready. So I'm excited to see next episode, especially what happens at the end of the episode, because other people are going to go talk to Melanie. So where is she going to go? What's that going to lead into? It's going to be fun to, to track her to see what comes out of all this with, with Melanie. Sugar notices a tail. He knows it's not Davy because Davy's way shittier at tailing than these people are <laughs> yeah. he's like oh these guys are actually pretty good at it they're keeping their distance that car again someone keeping an eye on me on and off keeping their distance <laughs> they're pretty good this can't be them so then he sees carl's dog wiley he tracks the location with the phone that he gave to carl goes to the motel to find him dead from an od very sad scene the man that was there was in the bathroom. It was like, who the hell are you? Probably the guy who hooked him up with the drugs. I'm guessing it was some type of fentanyl or something like that by the look of the powder on the little desk area there. He died. He throws this guy against the wall. Doesn't get anything out of it. Pays off the guy who works at the motel. It was like, hey, I was never here. And I really like that he takes Wiley with him. I was like, yeah. what's he going to do with the dog? Yeah. I was I was really happy that he like, takes Wiley with him. That was It was really cool nice. to see, like, uh, he's such a calm and collected character, too. To have that yeah. moment where he just kind of like, he just has these subtle moments where he just snaps and kind of wrecks a dude for a sec. And he's like, sorry. I don't like hurting people. I'm just like composing yeah. himself. Yeah it's, yeah, it's really well done. He's yeah. like, I don't want to hurt. I don't want to hurt people. He, he said that in episode one. I don't like hurting people. I really don't. And he says yeah, but he's two. entirely capable of doing so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My favorite Easy. kind of character. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. So he takes Wiley to Ruby's, asks if he can stay with her. She says no because of her cat. Uh, he tells her about the tail, and then he takes Wiley with him. So then she makes a phone call to someone saying that someone's following him. I don't know what that's all about. Maybe she's just trying to look out for him. You trust Ruby, right? I mean, I do. Yeah, it's, I think it's more that I trust uh, Sugar and his judge of character. Okay. Like they've set up that he's really good at telling when people are lying, and he, he's kind of... Uh, aware of most things and a step ahead so it makes yeah. me less hesitant about ruby even though it feels like she could be somewhat uh menacing in in a way there's like this weird undertone of uh, like unsure like i'm unsure about her character as a whole but i'm sure of his judgment of the character so it makes me like not not as uh I don't know. I don't look as closely, I guess, at, at what she's doing. Yeah, I'm with you there. Ruby was like, you got to go take care of that body in the trunk. So he goes to take care of the body, but someone beat him to it. So much for body disposal. Someone beat me to it. But he sees a strand of hair in the trunk. He decides to take that. So I'm sure he'll look into it to see if he can piece together who it is. But I think we have a pretty good idea of who does it by the end of the episode. We'll get into it in a second. Sugar takes Wiley back to his place. He says this case reminds him of his sister, but hopes the case has a different outcome. I'm guessing the sister died. His sister yeah. died. And then, okay, the final scene. Carmen's sister, Teresa, goes home with her two kids, and there's gangsters there waiting for her. They say they're looking for Clifford. So, Teresa, uh, I'm looking for my friend, Clifford Carter. He was fucking your sister. Who's the guy, the dead guy in the trunk? They were like, we'll talk, we would talk to Carmen in, in, a, in an ideal scenario, but unfortunately she's dead, so we have to talk to you. He's worried because Clifford's been missing for two weeks and he has information on his phone about this guy. I didn't get this guy's name yet, did you? Stallings. Stallings? Yeah, he's going to be in five episodes. Okay, so he's yeah. going to be a major character. <laughs> so Stallings is this mob boss, I'll call him for now, or whatever, this gangster. And he really wants to find Clifford, to find Clifford's phone, so this information that is on Clifford's phone doesn't get out there. And he stored all this shit, my shit, on his phone. 
But now, I haven't seen or heard from Clifford in over two weeks. He shows her a couple of messages that he got from Clifford before he went missing. The first was, fuck this bitch, with a picture of Carmen. The second one was a picture of Melanie with the text saying, this bitch look familiar to you? Unfortunately for Teresa, she, by her face, you can tell she recognizes Melanie, and they're like, all right, cool. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. She, she knows. We'll talk to her next. We're going to go see Melanie now. And that's how the second episode wraps up. So this guy Stallings, you said his name is? Yeah. So he's going to go talk to Melanie. We got a tracker on Melanie's car, so I'm sure Sugar will be there when... Or he'll know where she is when this takes place. He has this gun on him. The only reason he has a gun on him is because it's from an old movie. It's like yeah. the exact gun, <laughs> prop from a movie. So Look, this isn't any old gun, all right? This is the gun that Glenn Ford used in the Big Heat. He'll carry it only because of that. Plus, I figured this was the only way I was going to get you to do it. Who's playing who? <laughs> wow. Well, thank there you. you go. You're welcome. So that's going to come into play. We have a couple things working here. You know, we yep. got Bernie, what he's hiding. Davey, what did he do to these females? Olivia, where is she? Is she still alive? I think she's still alive. Melanie, does she know that Olivia killed Clifford? Does she know where she is? And when Stallings finds out that Clifford is dead, how will he react to this? So loving the show so far. Can't wait to see episode three. And yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments. What are you expecting to see? What do you think's going on? Do you have any theories? If you have some cool theories, leave them below and we'll read them in the next episode. Yep. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Later. But I think she had like a life changing moment that just kind of freaked her out.